Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. Honor Magic Watch 2. Uh, don't you mean watch magic, Mr. Ticks? No, no. They switched it all up on us now, and it's called Magic Watch. And this is number two, following up the... Well, you'll see later. Let's look at the watch. Beautiful packaging, first of all. A really, really elegant excellent job the watch floats in its own little shell here with cutouts for the buttons we'll get back to that you lift this little tab over a holographic honor label and it reveals two sections in here with another little flap that you can lift up and get into all of the accessories which include a round charging dock not one of my favorites by any means two pins on a round circle that have to line up with the two pins on the bottom of the watch. In this day and age of wireless chargers that look like this, that you just slap the watch on anywhere you want, this thing is so 1980s. Well, right, they didn't have smart watches in 19. How about 2016? Um, and you can hardly tell, there they are. And if you get it just right, there you go. When it latches in, it's going to actually be hugging those charging docks. Not hard to get used to if you set it on the table and make sure you put your watch on it in just the right way, which is what I've had to do in using it. But there's a lot better designs than something like this. Okay, in addition inside here, actually I really like the watch. I'm not dissing it. I'm just really frustrated they, for such an elegant and nice product that they... Well, I'd fire somebody in the <laughs> in the charger department for sure. We've got the charging wire all wrapped up and pretty. It's got its own little QR code on it and everything. And notice it's the USB-C type. We are starting to see the migration now to that, which is great. Um, and not just the micro SD. And then, of course, we've got little booklets in here that are the manuals in their own little compartment. And these include a warranty card, which I won't spend a lot of time going through in different languages. And of course, the quick start guide, which I'll look at once I tell you about it. I got to do that at the very beginning. Sorry, folks. Geek Buying has brought us this watch, which is awesome. We don't hear a lot from them, but when they do show up, they've got great things. It's the uh, Honor Magic Watch 2 46 millimeter. It's a 1.39 inch fitness activity tracker, and we'll go into more detail on this in a second. Be right back with this. Let's do the manual and show you the basics, contents. And again, for those who are new here, what is he doing? I page through uh, all of the manuals of all of the products we review and give you time to freeze frame it if you need to. Move out of the way there. Um, you know, so that you can uh, actually take time to read it if you want to. And the reason for doing that is many, many times these are not available anywhere. Pretty much a short manual um, just to get you started. Back to this. Again, this is the Magic Watch 2. Uh, this is their price, but check the uh, show notes for a coupon discount. This is the original Huawei Honor Magic smartwatch 1.2 inch this is the honor magic watch 2 okay they also sell this one we've reviewed this one uh, we'll have a link in the show notes you can go over and take a look at that too two completely different watches confusing similar terms but nonetheless they are both available from geekvine let's look at the specs on the one we're reviewing today the magic watch 2 it comes in two sizes. This is the 46 millimeter size, and um, it's got a, a regular 1.39 inch AMOLED screen, 14 days standby, and that's true. Five atmosphere water resistance. You can definitely swim with it. This is the uh, charcoal black. They also have a brown one. Four gigabytes of memory installed with about two available for you to load up music if you want to play it on there. And it's got the health tracker, heart rate monitor, pedometer, and so forth. Call reminders and so forth. Also, on the 46 millimeter version, it has speaker and uh, microphone 
and a tie-in with your phone so that you can actually make and receive calls from the watch, which is really cool. The uh, smaller size doesn't support that though. Here's the rest of the overall specs and its appearance and its packaging. Now, that's the Magic Watch 246 millimeter. You may ask, what's the difference between the two? The Magic Watch 2 and the Honor Magic Watch 1. Well, here they are. And again, I'm not going to belabor it, uh, point out a couple of things. There's 15 sport modes. It's a larger uh, size display, right, in the new one, the Watch 2. It's got all these different things going on, which look pretty much the same. There's a blood oxygen version in the China version, which is not what you'll get if you order. Um, so basically the true relax, sleep, and scene are in these, including, um, or not including, I'm sorry, the blood oxygen. Okay, the standby time, battery life, the Bluetooth has been bumped up some. And then this is worth reading down here at the bottom because it kind of goes through the specific detailed differences in these watches. And so we can keep moving on. I'll let you freeze frame that later. So what about the Magic Watch 2, this one? Uh, and it's two different sizes, the 46 versus the 42. Well, again, it's basically the overall uh, display size and the watch size and the weight without strap. But other than that, the functions are very similar. You're getting twice the standby battery time. And on the larger one, you've got extra memory. You just have a little bit of memory on the smaller one. Uh, extra memory for music and, of course, supported with speaker, mic, Bluetooth calling, and music player. And again, take a look at the text down at the bottom, which is pretty much covered in the specs. So now you know the difference with three different watches, the two sizes of the Magic Watch 2 and the comparison with the original. Let's summarize it for you in one big chart. Yeah, I've been trying to do my research for you because I had a heck of a time figuring it all out myself. You got that? Okay. And finally, we've got the Honor Magic Watch 2 compared with the Huawei Watch GT2. That's a hot comparison a lot of people will be actually doing because they both come in both sizes. They both have AMOLED screens. And they're both waterproof to 5 ATM. The bandwidth's on them, 20, 22 millimeter. The sensors compared between the two and so forth. The standby time is very similar. You've got the bump up in memory and the bigger ones and the speaker support. In fact, the main feature of the Honor Magic Watch 2 and Huawei Watch GT2 are almost the same. Mm -hmm. All support the Bluetooth call in the larger size and so forth. Okay, the GT2 supports first, I think that's supposed to be first beat algorithm such as training intensity, personal workout guide, VO2 max, and so on. Again, check to see if this is supported outside of China before you buy it on that uh, basis. But you'll find that the uh, GT2 is more expensive than the Honor Watch 2. Good, we're done. Let's look at this watch. Little red line around the button, pressing it, turns it on. Couple of seconds wait, and we should see it. Here we go. Um, what can I say about this? This is a really cool watch. While I've been doing all that stuff with all of the different Android watches recently, at the same time, I've been using this one extensively. Why? A couple of things. One, it's got this beautiful always on screen. It's optional to turn it on if you want to, and I do keep it on, and I'm still getting well over a week of full use of this thing. And not just in standby, but aggressively wearing it every day, all night, getting sleep reports on it, turning on the GPS, doing some walking, riding in the car and tracking my path. It's just overall an ideal watch. You have, of course, removable, nice silicone bands, fits snugly and easily on the arm. You can um, press here and come back to your time. You can slide down and get into all kinds of things, so you can... Um, Go into a do not disturb mode and it'll block it from uh, all of these different things and then you can wake it back up again. 
you've got your vibration and your alarms and an overall settings and uh, brightness that you can control right here from the screen too. And it's flashing on here. Um, we're at 100%. You got settings we can come into. Tether it to earbuds because you can get music on this one if you want to. You can monitor the display. Um, change your watch faces from here, adjust the brightness. And in the advanced section, of course, you've got the um, auto sleep capability, the screen on that you can set it to be on for a length of time. I've got it for five minutes and a standby watch face, which is what you just saw there. The analog one, I also have access to none if you don't want it or a digital one. And when it times out and goes off because you can't press the button to turn it off but when it goes off it won't go black it'll now go to a digital one and of course you can change the color of all of that too that's in here in the display advanced and then you got sounds you can mon um you know change your volume and silent mode and the uh strength of your vibration you can set and you do not disturb you can modify the down button to do a lot of things. And I have it set for workout because that's the easiest way to just get in there and start a workout. But you can see your records or your status. You could have it do your heart rate, activity, sleep, stress, all of these things. Breathing exercises, if that's important to you, you can program that into that bottom button. How long have I been talking that we should have this capability for Android watches? Hello? I mean, none of them allow you to program that bottom button. Well, here it is. You can do air pressure, you, air pressure, barometric pressure, a compass. You can see all the things that this watch is capable of. Notifications, your overall weather, and so forth. All these now are just simply what you're programming that bottom button to do. They're not the actual apps. You can get that uh, further in here. And then you can get into the uh, system where it's basically reset, disconnect, wipe it, do all those things. And finally, about, which is your device name, the model, the Mac, the version, the serial number, and all of the stuff that goes along with it. And that's in the settings. Now, if I swipe up, you get your notifications pushed to you as tethered to your phone. Um, nothing to the left or right from there. Going to the left, I go this way, going to the right, I go that way, and they all circle around. So let's go through. We've got your heart rate continuous monitoring. Your, um, your resting heart rate is figured out, your maximum and minimum, and um, your daily stuff. And here, same thing for stress. Now, one more swipe gets you into the weather in your area, and it's selectable, and I'm showing it in uh, Fahrenheit, which is really cool. And then you've got your music player if you have any installed. This is a look at what you're doing with your step count and then you're back to your regular faces. So they all rotate circularly around in a loop. And to change faces, you can simply press and hold and go through them. And they've got names and everything. I really like Expedition. I'll show you in a minute. You can choose a picture from your gallery, make your own face. You've got clear vitals. Airstream, all just different representations of ways of showing the time, most of them all digital. Dashing gives you a lot of information as well. Here's a fancy one called Geo Steel Ven. Okay, and um, like I said, I'm using the first one because it's one of the few that has the uh, active heart rate going on it, as well as your step count, date, and power level. Overall, just a really nice watch. You got uh, your temperature and your um, step count, I guess. I'm not sure what that is. 98? Anyway, because we got power level over here. So I'm waiting for it to time out so I can show you the screen that it goes to. But it might take a little while. So while we're waiting, and notice the heart rate went off because I'm not wearing it yet, which I'll put on in just a minute. Uh, while we're waiting for it to time out, let me grab the app and bring it over here. It's the Huawei Health app. That's what um, it basically looked like when you jump into it. You've got these different panes available to you. We've reviewed this app before extensively, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. Hello, are you going to time out on me? Oh, okay. I didn't cover all of the uh, app drawer either, so we've got to get to that. You can go into heart rate and see your heart rate uh, up to date. 
Uh, I've had it off for a little while while I was charging it back up, but all since midnight this morning, I've had it here. And your range, high and low, is all calculated. You can get it for the week and the month and the year. All that's capable as well. Um, this takes you into your overall exercise records. And I spend a lot of time in bike mode just riding in the car, seeing how long it takes me to get from point A to point B. And I can, there you go, I can also uh, monitor the actual speed uh, I'm traveling from, the GPS that's built into it. And that's the digital face. It's got some colorful lines going down and a nice bright digital face you can see outdoors as well. So you've got all of this stuff for each month that you can work with. Then you've got your last night's sleep information broken down to deep and light and REM sleep, which is nice. Not often is REM included and awake time as well with some breakdown and the sections that you're in and the points that you're earning. Interesting. Okay. And stress, which is something unique to this one. It can do a continuous stress monitoring or you can do a momentary one if you want to. And it'll tell you information about what's going on there. There's the stress test you can activate. And then your weight. If you want to put your weight in there, you have to manually update that. The thing can't figure your weight out just by wearing it on your arm. But you do have a um, tag on here that you can use for that. You have your exercise area where you can go in and do your own exercises. And it immediately starts with a graph of your area based on the GPS. I think getting it from the phone when you're in the app. You have here where the devices are located. You can go into this and you can set all these different parameters for the watch. Alarms, notifications, weather reports. Raise your wrist to see the time. Check your firmware update. And then, of course, you've got me, which is where you put in your own profile. Settings related to data sharing, heart rate zone limits, notifications and units. All the basic kind of stuff. And then an overall about, which tells you something about uh, here. And a phone number you can contact in the USA. That's interesting for um, any kind of service needs that you have. So all in all, that's the health app that tethers nicely to the watch. We are in the ambient screen. I don't know if you notice that it brightened up just a little bit there. If you have it in the twist your wrist, it goes into a little dimmer ambient mode, but when you twist it, it can light up into a little bit brighter. See that? Just before, you know, you get into the main uh, page. Let's go into the app drawer here. Now, unlike the other one where we were programming the button, this is actually where you go into this stuff. You could go into workouts right here, and this is where you get your running courses that you can actually do outdoor run, indoor run, walks, pool swims, climbing, hiking, trail runs, triathlons, ellipticals, and other, all kinds of possibilities here. And then your workout records will show up in here. These are the actual ones that I've done, and it's giving you basic uh, outdoor cycling information for this one, showing you my distance, duration, calories burned, speeds, elevation, climbing, and falling, heart rate during that process, heart rate zones that you were in, your overall trajectory speed, wow, altitude at any moment in the path, and your overall training effect. So really robust uh, overall records that are maintained here. And as you saw, they also transfer to the phone. Your workout status, heart rate is here, activity records, these are the uh, basic step count kind of records that are here. Your sleep information from last night, like we saw, and there's stress. Breathing exercises that lets you go into a meditation for a period that you set, and it'll just guide you to inhale and exhale. Your call logs, contacts, information, music. There's the air pressure for your outdoor barometric air pressure. And you see it's tracking it over time as well. So you can probably monitor it to see if there's going to be a weather change. Um, and then the compass, a digital compass that's built into it that, like all of them, wants you to calibrate it by twirling it around in a figure eight. And it comes back. Now I'm sitting in the north. So, yep, it's due north is this direction. Fairly responsive. And it tells you what direction you're pointing right there. 
Uh, your notifications, weather, basic stopwatch and timer are in here. Flashlight just lights the screen up bright and white. Some people program that bottom button to be the flashlight. You can see the lock on your uh, car door to stick your key in, right? Find your phone and overall settings, which we've already been into. So I'm back on the uh, analog ambient screen here now, and this is what it looks like on a uh, really nice, attractive watch. I've got a little loose right now to play with, and I wanted to uh, show you a little bit about the speaker and microphone capability. Right now, in my other phone behind my back, I am placing a phone call to my cell phone, and I have this watch tethered to that cell phone, and we're going to see what happens when the call comes in. Should be any second. There we go. The sound is turned off on the uh, cell phone, but I'm getting it relayed over here and it's vibrating. So I can answer and I can speak into it. I'm going to talk to it from my phone here. Hello? Hello. Testing. Testing? Yeah, it's really hard for me to do this for you, but I'm speaking into my house phone and you're hearing it, I hope, through the watch. And now the other way around. I'm going to... Uh, Put this in speakerphone, I guess. Let's see. Okay. Oh, dear. Now yeah, we're getting feedback. But there I am talking in the watch, and you're hearing it. Aye, 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 aye. Okay, okay, enough, and I just hung it up. So we have um, great clarity with the phone call capability, Bluetooth tethered to the cell phone. The other thing I want to show you is if I get back in here, come into our uh, workout area. I set this up with the trainer voice uh, activated and to give you an idea of what it sounds like, let's pop into a typical triathlon. It says to press here for the next event and we would look normally for GPS, wait for it to link in. This will turn solid when that uh, gives us the signal and then we're good to go, but we can bypass that as well. Also, heart rate kicks in. Listen. Start swimming. Okay, so I'm now starting to swim in my triathlon part, and when I've completed the swimming, Swimming finished. Starting to transition. I'm in a transition period to my next event. Start cycling. Okay, I'm now cycling away. Cycling. You hear the voice nice and clear? It's good and loud in this Start one. Running. Mm hmm. And the running is the last one. There's no transition. So I can mute it here if I don't want to or change the volume level of the training coach. I can lock the screen so it won't be activated and I can stop it. Workout ended. Nice, huh? So you got microphone, you got speaker, you got built in GPS. And it's very accurate, works really well. I think it's using at least two systems. You got Bluetooth tethering. You've got all these different apps. You've got all these different capabilities. You've got barometer. You've got, oh, by the way, this is your altitude in meters and that's the barometric pressure. What you don't have is VO2 max in this watch unless you're in China, uh, but everything else is stable and accurate. A good seven to 14 days of battery life programmable button, which I've now programmed for the flashlight. Took my own advice last night going, darn, I wish I would have had a flashlight with me. <laughs> now I do. Where can you get this? Geek Buying, of course. Thank you, Geek Buying, for sending this awesome watch over. It has become, folks, my daily driver. That says a lot for Mr. Tix. I don't know how long, but right now, a long time. I, it's got everything that I want and need in a fitness health watch. I'm not doing sleep apnea, EKGs, blood oxygen, or any of those things, but for basic um, pulse, which is what you need, um, and uh, training motivation to do some of these uh, different activities with a voice challenger, it's nice. Really nice watch. The Huawei Honor Magic Watch 2 in the 46 millimeter size with speaker, with um, microphone, and of course the trainer and the, uh, the Bluetooth tethering phone call capability. If you get the smaller version, um, 42 millimeter, you don't have all of that, as you saw in the specs. 
If you so like to, you can drop back and pick up the uh, original Honor Magic Smartwatch 1.2. Not sure if this is the Honor Magic Magic Honor Honor Magic Watch Watch Ma Magic Honor Watch Watch Magic one. Uh, the pre predecessor for this one, or if this is even a different watch, but whatever. This is probably not the one you're going to want anyway, but they do have it there. I have links in the show notes for you. And of course, if we have a coupon, we'll have that for you as well. You've been watching Smart Watch Ticks. We really appreciate your subscription and being here. And of course, whenever you're buying a watch, if you can use the links we provide you, that helps us out to get more goodies like this. We'll see you again soon. Oh, goody, 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 goody. Now, one of the things it talked about was that this watch can do underwater heart rate. That's what it says. I'm going to see if it really works. We're going to go into the run, walking, pool. There we go. Pool, swim, open water. It says it's not going to get GPS um, underwater. Duh. Uh, that's okay. But it's going to try to get GPS right now. And it's going to get my heart rate going, which is what I really want to test. I'm pretty good and secure. I've got my container filled with water. Are you ready to dunk? 67, 678, um, locking in. And down we go. Oh, I can barely get under, but I can certainly twist it around. Oh, by the way, in the pool mode, the screen is locked out. The only way, he says, as it comes out, you're making me look silly. What's with this? Urgh. It's supposed to be locked out. I'll show you in just a second. Come on now. Let's begin. Okay. Okay. There I am in a pool swim. Are you locked? <laughs> How embarrassing. I go through all this setup and then it does this. I've got heart rate going at the top, right? Yeah, I know. I should probably have something else measuring heart rate as well. The ring doesn't. You saw the review on the ring, right? The, uh, uh, what you might call it? Ring? I can't even think. I'm so embarrassed. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's counting. And of course, I'm in the warm up period. There's the time and there's the heart rate. And it is actually still working. Uh, and the screen is locked out. Yes. The only way you can get out of it, it says, is you have to press and hold. Otherwise, it'll just resume when you go like that. And the screen is not sensitive. I wonder what it did that first time. Anyway, it's working fine. It's a 5 ATM capability. When you take it off, you see the green diode is going. And, of course, with it not on my arm, it's not getting a heart rate. And if I take my finger and I cover it and I give it a moment underwater, I should get my heart rate back again. And if I were doing anything swimming wise, it would uh, it would show up there. And there we go. 82, 75, zeroing in on my heart rate. And again, to get out of it, you're never supposed to press a button underwater. But I did. And I'm out of the open water routine on the watch and of course now i have full capability to use the screen oh <laughs> well there you go it works